let's take a look at the rhomboids on the right hand side of the body with our client Justin. He's seated on a bench and he's facing away so we have a posterior view. The rhomboids are located between the spine and the medial border of the scapula. There are two rhomboids, the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major. The rhomboid minor is more superior, the rhomboid major is more inferior, but they run parallel to each other so they have the same effective line of pull. The rhomboids are named rhomboids because a rhomboid is a diamond shape. And if we look at the shape that the rhomboid minor and major together create, it creates a diamond shape like this. There's the medial border of the scapula, there's the spine, and then the other attachments are slanted parallel to each other there. That's a diamond rhomboid shape. As far as the specific attachments, the rhomboid minor attaches onto the spinous process of C7 and T1, and the rhomboid major attaches onto the spinous processes of T2, 3, 4, and 5. From there, the rhomboid minor runs laterally and inferiorly to attach onto the medial border of the scapula at the root of the spine of the scapula right here. There's the spine of the scapula. I strum perpendicular to find it right there. The rhomboid major attaches from the spinous processes of T2, 3, 4, 5 running laterally and inferiorly to attach onto the medial border of the scapula from the root of the spine down to the inferior angle of the scapula right there. The rhomboids attach to the spine and the scapula. The scapula is clearly the more mobile attachment, so let's see what the rhomboids can do to the scapula regarding joint actions. Well, the scapula is more lateral than the spinal attachment, so the scapula would be pulled medially toward the midline, and that would be retraction of the scapula at the scapulocostal, or we can say scapulothoracic joint. Justin, can you show us retraction? Perfect. And the attachment on the scapula is more inferior than the attachment on the spine, so the scapula would be pulled into elevation, which we can call shrugging the shoulder in lay terms, at the scapulocostal joint. Can you shrug your right shoulder? Perfect, and relax down. But of course, there's really one line of pull for the rhomboids, which is a diagonal, which incorporates both the retraction and the elevation. So the one motion pattern of the rhomboids on the scapula would be a combination of bringing your shoulder uh, girdle back, your scapula back, and up. So go ahead and show us that. There we go, and relax. Now, the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major are equally effective for retraction and elevation because the line of pull is identical. But there is one other joint action that the rhomboids can do upon the scapula, and that's a motion called downward rotation of the scapula, which is a rotation motion that orients the glenoid fossa of the scapula inferiorly, downwardly. Now, the axis of rotation for downward rotation is approximately right about, you know, the spine of scapula, right about here. And that means that the farther down we are on the medial border, the more leverage force we have. The greater is the lever arm, the moment arm. So that means that the fibers of rhomboid major are more effective at downwardly rotating the scapula than are the fibers of the rhomboid minor. So for retraction and elevation, rhomboid minor, rhomboid major, equally strong, effective, but for downward rotation, the rhomboid major is much stronger than the rhomboid minor.